The mouse moves the cursor, and it's customary to change the appearance of the cursor to indicate the sort of thing at the location of the cursor. Now, a cursor is very much a thing of the operating system, so some basic rules must be followed if your cursor setting is to be portable and work on any system running your Java program. Remember, portability is a number one concern of Java. Each operating system has a collection of predefined cursors that can be used on the display. The setting of the exact appearance of these cursors will vary from one computer to the next, but you can select any one of the predefined types and the cursor appearance will change to fit to that one configured into the system. It's easy to do and you can change the cursor from inside your program. I've got a simple program that changes the cursor appearance according to its location in the window. Now this program implements the mouse motion listener interface so it can follow the mouse and will know which cursor to display. The definitions of the cursors are made by selecting an int from those defined inside the cursor class. Now this variable is going to keep track of the horizontal location of the mouse and the pointer will change its appearance according to where it's located in the window. The window is divided equally into partitions and a different cursor is shown in each one. To do this we need to know the size of the window so get size is called to return a dimension object containing the size. Here the window is evenly divided up into partitions, one for each cursor. The value of index is set to the subscript of the cursor that is to be displayed in the current section of the window. If the index is valid, that is, if it's a valid number that's to be used as a subscript in the array, and if this is a change in the type of cursor, a new cursor type is removed from the array and stored in the variable named cursor type. A call is then made to get predefined cursor of the cursor class to return an actual cursor object of that type. Finally, a call is made to set cursor to make the currently selected cursor type the one that appears in the window. Then we just get on with the drawing. Actually, the only thing drawn in the window is a bunch of light gray vertical lines showing the boundaries between the sections of the window. Then a brief description of the cursor itself is drawn into the window. All that's left for this program to do is set the value of x to show where the mouse is located. The methods mouse moved and mouse dragged are both used to set the value. And that should do it. And here are all the different pointers. Notice that every time a border is crossed, the cursor changes its appearance for the cursor that fits that section of the window. Now, normally, when I'm recording one of these sessions, I have the system set to show a big arrow for almost everything, but I'm not doing that this time. When the mouse moves outside the window, the cursor is under the control of other windows and is no longer changed by this application, except when dragged. Recall that a dragging mouse has its movements reported back to the window. Well, not only that, but the program also still has control over the appearance of the mouse. At least, whatever the appearance it had when it last left stays in effect until the mouse button is released.